Okay, um, chromatic tutorial. Um, first thing, first things first, you're gonna wanna, like, record your chromatic audio. A. I. E. O. U. Do. So that's just, like, an example thing, right? I just recorded that, like, two minutes ago. Um. <laughs> and, um, then the next thing you're gonna do, or, like, as in preparation, right? You're gonna want to make a new folder and name it like, I don't know, like just name it whatever. Um, tutorial chromatic. There we go. And then, so then you're gonna want to, like, take the samples you just now recorded, or you could like find samples on the internet or whatever. Like if you're making one for a character, you could, like, take a few samples from that said character. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Um. So you're going to select one of the samples and then go up to file, export, and export selected audio. And you got to export it as, as dot .wav, wave, whatever the thing is. Um, otherwise, it's just not going to work. So you're going to name the first one, one. And you also have to, like, put them in, like, chronological order. Or, like, you have to number them. You have to call them, like, one, two, three, four, and so on. So it actually puts them in whatever order you want to. I. So, yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so now that you have your, uh, that's not it, that's not it. Now that you have your, there it is, your tutorial. No, 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 not tutorial. Um, Now that you have the samples all gathered into one little folder right here, um, you're going to want to... Go to Chromatic Skill Generator on Game Banana. I'll put the I'll put the link in the description or in the pinned comment or whatever. Um, yeah, you're gonna go down to wherever it is. Yeah, you're gonna download it from here. Um, I already have it downloaded, so I don't need to show that part exactly. I don't need to reinstall it or whatever. But yeah, you're gonna want to download that and do whatever you need to do while downloading it. So I'll just go ahead and open it up. Okay, so it should look like this once you open it. Um, first thing you're going to you're going to want to do, go into browse. That's just like the the most recently used. You go and you find the the folder you want to use and you click it, and it's a it has to say folder, and then the name of the folder. Select folder, and there there it is. And then, like, put whatever custom settings you want. You can do, like, range, like, the amount of notes you have, like, the uh, pitch range. Starting octave, I usually start at two. I usually keep everything else default except for range because it gives, you know, more freedom, more pitch, whatever. Uh, pitched, yeah, definitely. Unless you're making a rapping chromatic scale, like Pico. And then dump... If you want to make a sound font out of this, make sure to keep dump individual pitch samples checked. That's an important thing. So generate chromatic. It takes a second. If the blue outline shows up, that means it's done. Like on the on the generate. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Close that. And we go into where. Okay, I had to re-record this little section here because uh, I accidentally showed some files I didn't need to show. Like some, you know, personal stuff. But uh, anyways, this is this is how the final chromatic came out. A, I, E, O, U, D, A, I. So, uh, you know, it's a little a little rough, but it does get better in the higher notes. So I'm going to pull it back up again. I don't know why I closed a, it. A, O, U, D. Yeah, so it should sound something like that, yeah. Okay, so now we're going to talk about how to turn it into a sound font that you can use in, like, LMMS. Um... So first you're going to want you're going to want to install a little application called Polyphone, Polyphone, I don't know. Uh yeah, open that up once you get that installed. And then okay, new sound font. Um I'll just title it Tutorial Guy Sound Font. It's just my voice, but he's Tutorial Guy now, so you know. Um then you're going to click this click this little squiggly line up here. And then, that's not it. Alright. Then you go, so, in the little uh, squiggly line, like, pop-up menu, important in audio file, you're going to go to your folder once again, and then there should be a little folder inside the folder called Pitched Samples. And then you're going to 
So there's a bunch of like separated pitch samples of your chromatic. Um, click and like select all of them. Shut up. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just uh, you know, like select all of them at once, and then there's all your samples right here. But that's that's not it. That's not all. Um, so typically this is wrong. If your chromatic just comes out weird, it usually labels the wrong, you know, down here in the tuning section, you're going to want to, there's like a number correlated to each note. And typically like, so it'll have a number and then whatever key it's in. Most of my chromatics start at 36, uh, C. So you, you start at 36 and then you go up from there. So 36, 37, 38. It is a pretty long process depending on how many samples you have. But, um, I don't know if I'm going to record this entire part here. I'm just going to, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll cut back to when I'm, when I'm done labeling all those individually. Okay. I got all the little samples, uh, individually labeled. Got all them. If, if, um, if your chromatic scale, if it's range goes up to 48, like mine does, like mine usually do, um, you're going to go from 36 to 83 typically. If it's any, no more, no less, um, if it's like, you know, 48, uh, range, you know, uh, if it's any more or less than that, you probably did something wrong. But anyways, for this next part, you're going to, you're going to pick the first or last sample and then you're going to scroll to the, so you're going to pick the first sample and then you're going to scroll to the bottom one and then you're going to hover your mouse over it and, uh, you're going to. So this one's important. You got to control shift and then click and it'll select all the samples, all of them. Yeah. So just click the first one, go down here and then control shift click, and then it'll select all of them. <clears throat> and then you'll click this little, uh, speaker simple s symbol and you'll add an instrument. Um, I'll just name it like Bubba boy. And then you'll you'll get this little spreadsheet right here. And then for this, it's way easier. Like it's still a lot of numbering, but it'll, it takes way less time. So you see the sample root key. Basically, on this key range part at the very top, you're gonna just copy the the root key, the sample root key on the thing. So watch me just speed run this part. This isn't very hard. Nope, I'm just up. Okay, now that you got all that, I see, you see that? I got that in like a minute or so. Uh, you're gonna hover, you're gonna click your little instrument symbol on on the left hand side then you're gonna click this little uh add a preset button at the very top the little music symbol or whatever i don't know and then select new pre create a new preset and then click okay then you can save it so i'll just name it yeah tutorial guy sound font and save it to my sound font folder and uh yeah Okay, for this, this is this is just a part for like LMMS people or people who use LMMS. Um, you're gonna so if you want if you don't know how to use sound fonts, which I'm sure you already do, if you're making like a custom song or something like a song that doesn't use a MIDI as a bass, you're gonna put uh you're gonna go to the left hand side instrument plugins, and then put like SF2 player drag that into the thing that, like I just did. Open it up, uh, and then click file, click the little purple thing over file, if I can find the thing, um, sound fonts, sound fonts, there it is, okay, go into there, there, and tutorial, guy. uh, typically if it's gonna open up, like, a little pop-up thing, like it just did, and then you're gonna find, you're gonna wanna find wherever you, like, put your sound font. So now it just...
It's very quiet, but let me just make a little. So typically, let me turn up the volume there. It would sound like, yeah, this is what it sounds like. Let me fix the tempo here. Yeah. Oh yeah, and um, if you're gonna use a MIDI as a bass instead, you're gonna wanna like, okay, so yeah, open up an empty one again, go into file, import, and then find whatever MIDI you wanna use. Um, I don't know, I guess I'll just pick, oh, it's not there, never mind. I'll just use this one I made a little while back. So there it is. Remove these. Those don't need to be there typically. Then you, again, you're going to want to find wherever this you put the sound font. So there it is, there it is. Tutorial guy, yeah. This is too high. Um, yeah, so then you're going to do that. I'm just going to add my little spice here. Chorus. Reverb. Yeah, there we go. Just to spice it up a little bit more instead of making it bland. And uh, yeah, that's a, this. Here's what that sounds like. There's no boyfriend. <laughs> He's out there. He's gone. He's on break. Yeah. There, there it be.